I wake up in the morning and I fly to Pasadena, California. What I was doing is for my company, the real estate company that I work with, I spend a lot of time doing investor presentations. And if the speech is over, and a guy comes right at me, makes a beeline for me. He said, I'm ex-military, I fought in whatever wars, and then I got injured. And after my injury, they moved me into the military academy. What I do is I train soldiers and how to become great soldiers. That's what my job was. And I teach my soldiers always to look out for the hero's moment. What is the hero's moment? One of the greatest people ever was an individual that was referenced in the Gemara, a man named Rabbi Akiva. So if I were guessing, I would say he probably grew up and he was the firstborn son of the greatest rabbi ever, but that's not the case. Rabbi Akiva was a shepherd who did not until the age of 40 even understand Olive base. 40 years old he starts and he doesn't become just a rabbi. He becomes the leader of the generation. And not only does he become the leader in Torah, every he becomes a military giant. And he's got 24,000 students that's bigger than Lakewood and the Mir and Esau combined. And he's got the right hand of Torah and the left hand of military strength. And he's got God clearly on his side. Sirius Omer. It all starts to unravel. And the students start to die. And it goes from bleak to bleaker to dark to Black. What would a reasonable man do next? He'd pack it up, he'd go to his apartment, and he would basically lick his wounds for the rest of his life. And he would say, you know what? I guess Hashem wasn't with me. You know what Rabbi Kiva does? He gets up, brushes himself off, he goes down south and goes, you know what? Let me open up again. I'm only over 100. And he has five students. Can you imagine 24,000? Now he's got five guys in the front. But guess what? The Gemaras that you learn, the Kabbalah that runs this world, is all being revealed from those five. And we're in this room today. We're sitting here today because of those five. The question is how? So I'm sitting in Pasadena, California, and my new friend Jim, the military guy, says to me, there's three levels of soldiers. They're good soldiers, and there are great soldiers. Great soldiers go the extra mile. And then, in their training, something happens. Something happens when everything goes wrong and everybody quits. And there's always one soldier that never gives up. There's always one that when all reasonableness says, stop, says, I am never stopping. That's the hero's moment. You could be the greatest guy in the world, but you're not tested until you fall. And when you fall, that's when you decide. That's when you see if you're just great or you're a hero. You know what's amazing about Judaism? We're a nation that is built off the backs of the few heroes every generation. It's when a whole nation stands at the banks of a river and says, how am I going into the river? What are we even doing here? And one Jew, Nachshon, says, I am never giving up. It's one Jew when the whole world is sitting at the edge of Canaan and they say, we can't go in, we can't fight, we're Jews. We can sue them, but we're never gonna fight them. It's one Jew calling that says, although not, live in the rush It's one Jew dumber that says, Goliath isn't cursing out God. In every generation, there's those few Jews that when the going gets tough, they never give up. And it's in those small moments where they don't get up that they get all the benefits. There's some parents that never give up on their kids. Their teacher, their coach says that they're going to be nothing. And some parent says, I'm never giving up on my child ever. And it's in those moments that kid becomes that kid. I'm never giving up on my marriage. I'm never giving up on Judaism. I don't care if it gets hard. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Because only when it's tough do I become a hero.